Welcome to the East Asia by Rhodes Murphy chapter summary podcast at the historian's eye. Please subscribe, and if you'd like to be notified when new episodes appear, click the bell icon. Chapter 12, Warriors, Monks, and Conflict, Medieval Japan. Section 1, Introduction. From the Heian regime in the 1180s to the country's unification in 1600, Japan was divided into conflicting factions of aristocrats and increasingly powerful provincial families. Japanese society was a culture of warfare, where warriors, or bushi, became dominant despite the preservation of supposed imperial authority. Section 2. The Collapse of the Heian By the late 9th century, the Fujiwara court in Heian, which is today Kyoto, had almost completely isolated itself and ignored the rest of Japan. As a result, a number of things happened. First, the central government became more symbolic than effective. Two, the Shoen and other local groups built up their family armies in conflict over land and offices. Three, occurrences of banditry and piracy increased. And four, Heian officials supervising state lands also organized their own armies. As these practices continued, they received military titles, indicating the change in their positions. Much of the new organization was along family lines, as had been the Shoen. However, defense was often allotted to other dependents. These groups became local warrior groups. Lesser Fujiwara descendants, given the surnames Minamoto or Taira, became the dominant provincial aristocrats instead of the old Uyi rulers. Disorder required local defense. In this period, the samurai, or the warrior class, became stronger, wealthier, and more politically powerful. One samurai group, the Bushi, emerged preeminent. The sword was their chosen weapon. Many samurai came from Uyi clans and continued their style of warfare, including light armor, elaborate helmets, and clan crests. The rivalry of the Taira and the Minamoto preceded the end of Heian control. A Taira leader had briefly established a kingdom near modern-day Tokyo in the early 900s. The Minamoto branch took over in the area. 12th century struggles in Heian itself illustrated the shift in importance to the new warrior class in the provinces. A retired emperor died in 1156, igniting the Hogan and the Heiji Wars in the capital. The conflict between the Fujiwara, Minamoto, and Taira clans centered on supporting their rival heirs to the throne. The Taira leader, Kiramori, emerged victorious, but maintained the emperor and his ceremonial role. Kiyomori built up his power. Relatives were placed in key government positions. Posts in the provinces and on estates were often distributed to followers. He had his daughter marry their emperor, and in 1180 his grandson was declared emperor with the Fujiwara regent. Yet he was unable to control the warrior groups outside of the capital or in any of the Buddhist monasteries. A rebellion led by a prince who had been set aside ignited the capital in 1180. The Minamoto leader, Yoritomo, and his brother, Yoshitsumi, joined the rebellion. Yoshitsumi took control of Heian, destroyed the Taira forces, and then moved against the Fujiwara forces in the north. Yoritomi destroyed the Fujiwara supporters in the north by 1190. By 1190, most of Japan was ruled by the Minamoto. The resulting Kamakura era was named for the fortified coastal town near modern-day Tokyo. Heian, or Kyoto, was maintained as a seat of the emperor. Section 3. The Kamakura Period, or Shogunate. Recognizing the change in their political role, the court in Kyoto granted Yoritomo court rank, official posts, and titles. The most important of which was the title of Shogun, which theoretically designated the role of the emperor's military advisor and chief of staff. In practice, the Shogun was Japan's actual ruler. 
Yoritomo implemented a new administrative structure referred to as a bakfu, or tent government, which distinguished it from the now lesser civil administration presided over in Kyoto. After an easily subdued rebellion in 1221, two Kamakura official residents were placed in Kyoto in order to keep an eye on the court. The shogun's power rested in the loyalty of his followers and vassals, some of whom received land or positions with Yoritomo's rise to power. Firm control of the government was also maintained through military strength and the extermination of potential rivals. When Yoritomo died, his two sons were passed over. The Hojo branch of the Taira family took power, having previously helped Yoritomo to take over. Yoritomo's widow assisted the coup, and her brother, Yoshitoki, became ruler. Instead of claiming the title of shogun, the Hojo rulers exercised their power indirectly through Fujiwara puppets. The Hojo clan thus preserved emperors and shoguns as puppets. Section 4. The Mongol Invasion Kublai Khan had already taken Korea by 1258 and he demanded Japanese submission in 1268. The Mongol emissaries were beheaded, some were sent back maimed. Kublai Khan prepared an expedition of about 30,000 that landed in 1274. The invasion was defeated with difficulty. Other emissaries in 1275 through 1279 were also mistreated. A second, much larger expedition was sent in 1281. About 100,000 Mongols, 50,000 Chinese, and 20,000 Koreans. This invasion was kept at bay at Hakata. A typhoon struck the Mongol forces which were destroyed by the Japanese fleet. The third expedition was planned for 1288, but the collapse of the Mongol Empire and rebellion in China prevented it. A special department for the invasion of Japan long remained part of the Yuan government. Yet the Hojo were weakened by these efforts. The Bakfu had spent its resources. Kamakura authority ended in 1333. Warriors and monks. Warrior culture. The Bushi and Samurai shared many of the values of Hei and courtiers. They also had essential administrative skills. Later, as they gained more literary skills, they became known as gentlemen warriors. Their swords were their badges of rank and office and symbolized loyalty. Part of the Bushi code was ritual suicide, known as seppuku, or disembowelment, or as harikiri, which means stomach cut. Yet women retained much of their earlier rights, inheriting property and holding public positions. Buddhism flourished, and a new sect emerged. Zen Buddhism The warrior class practiced primarily Zen Buddhism, which is known as Chan Buddhism in China. Zen Buddhism was brought to Japan in 1191 by the Chinese monk Eizai. Zen Buddhism stressed nature and contemplation, dispensing with priests, temples, and written texts. Zen temples were built at Kamakura in Kyoto, which became centers of learning, literature, and art. Mass Religion and Pure Land Buddhism As Buddhism was adopted by the masses, we know more about their lives. Some became religious leaders using Japanese and kana in their writing. Commoners became religious leaders and monks. Religious texts were even written in Japanese kana rather than Chinese. The Buddhist message of equality became more important, as did the idea of salvation. The monk Honen had founded the Pure Land sect in 1175. Shinran, a follower of Honen, spread the cult in an extremely simple form. The Nichiren sect Name for the monk who originated the practice was founded in 1253. His prophecies seemed vindicated by the Mongol invasions. His evangelism was met with enthusiasm. Section 5. Literature and the Arts The court at Kyoto continued to practice literature, but was paralleled by a new Kamakura literary culture. Many of the tales concerned wars and are still read today, such as the tale of the House of Tyra and the tale of the Hogan War. The mid-1200s produced a longer story, which was a reworking of these tales, and it was called the Tale of Heike. Historical works such as The Mind of the Eastland were also written. An autobiography of court life, called The Confessions of Lady Nijo, appeared in 1307. 
The work is a valuable record and depicts a decadent and empty life at court. Lady Nijo also criticized the hypocrisy of monks and the crudeness of the warrior class. Sculpture and painting throve. A 52-foot bronze Buddha at Kamakura remains a remarkable achievement. Heian styles were carried on in painting with more warlike imagery. The Nara temples, including the Todajai, were rebuilt. Ceramics were inspired by contact with China. Section 6, the end of the Kamakura Shogunate and the rise of the Ashikaga. A combination of factors led to the weakening of the Kamakura authority. The Kyushu family, which had been key in fending off the Mongols, felt unrewarded for their help and resisted Kamakura control. The warrior class increasingly adopted the values of the court and turned away from the more Spartan habits. Division of patrimonies among sons fragmented family power, and loyalties became increasingly local. The emperor, Go Daigo, took the throne in 1318 and aimed at real power. The emperor led a revolt supported by monastic armies in 1331. Kamakura was burned in 1333, ending Hojo power. Ashikaga Takauyi, from 1305 to 1358, was sent by the Kamakura regime to capture the emperor, but instead he established a new shogunate in 1338. Godaigo continued to fight for his own rule, but was forced to escape and create a court at Yoshino. The court lasted until 1392. The Ashikaga shogunate was in effect a coalition. Local rule reasserted itself. The court at Yoshino managed to maintain rivalry among imperial claimants to the throne. Ashikaga Yoshimitsu, 1358-1408, invited Godaigo's descendants to return to Kyoto. Alliance with the emperor was used to build up Ashikaga power. The Muromanchi district of Kyoto was made the Ashikaga Center, giving its name to the remainder of the Ashikaga Shogunate. Yoshimitsu's assertion of power lasted only until the death of his grandson in 1428. The Onen War followed. The Muromanchi period saw the disappearance of the court families and the decline of the Fujiwara and imperial families. The warrior families gained in power. The Onen War and economic growth. The Onen War lasted from 1469 to 1477, but was followed by a much longer period of low-level warfare. It saw the destruction of Kyoto and much of Ashikaga power. The Ashikage shoguns could not check the conflicts, and warrior families gained power at their expense. Local lords, or the daimyo, inherited local power using samurai. Villages ran themselves and were long Japanese administrative units. Daimyo headquarters in the scattered towns became the centers of commerce and craftsmanship. Daimyos drew on labor and taxes. The daimyo relied on foot soldiers, leading to greater opportunities for commoners. Some towns, such as Sakai, grew, as well as monasteries, some of which controlled whole regions. Yet the economy continued to develop. The daimyo increased agriculture production to their own ends. Trade increased, including with China and Korea. Barter was slowly replaced with money. Kyoto was the only real city, furnishing the country's major market and center of craftsmanship. Trade and Piracy Trade with China and Korea increased with the emergence of the Song Dynasty and often merged into piracy. The Japanese developed a reputation as pirates called Woku by the Chinese and Koreans. Kyushu especially was handy for both trade and piracy, with many harbors. Ming rulers encouraged Ashikaga shoguns to control piracy without success. The Ming also managed to gain Yoshimitsu's acceptance of tributary status by granting limited trade missions from Japan into China. The Japanese imported porcelains, silk, books, paintings, and large amounts of copper coins. They most often paid with raw sulfur, copper, silver, fine swords, painted folding fans, and picture scrolls. Muromanchi Culture In spite of Ashikaga's political weakness, economic growth allowed cultural growth. 
Yoshimitsu gathered scholars, writers, and artists in Kyoto. The Golden Pavilion in northern Kyoto was built in 1397 by Yoshimitsu to house this group of luminaries. The later shogun, Yoshimasa, built the Silver Pavilion in eastern Kyoto in 1483. Ashikaga shoguns directly supported the arts, first as a tool for legitimizing their newly gained power, and then as their authority lessened to assert Kyoto's cultural supremacy. The court was also a patron to Zen temples and monasteries. Many aspects of Japanese culture reached their mature form in this period. The tea ceremony, which reached its height in this period, is an example of the extent to which Japanese culture in this period was Zen culture. The concept of shibui, including the ideas of simplicity, subtlety, and beauty developed. A common theme in Japanese culture was the beauty of simplicity. The Arts Song style painting was mastered in Muromachi, Japan, and made into a particular Japanese style. Architecture aimed to blend building with the natural surroundings. The distinctive Japanese gardens of rock and sand or gravel also emerged. In literature, both classical Chinese and Japanese using kana were used. No drama took shape at Yoshimitsu's court. It has been compared to classical Greek drama. This quintessentially Japanese art form is formal and restrained, clearly influenced by Zen. Women became more clearly subjugated in this period, and few women in this period are known today for their literary or artistic accomplishments. Section 7. Renewed Civil War Ashikaga power declined in the last decades of the 15th century. The 16th century was marked by continuous rivalry among the clans. In 1568, Oda Nobunaga, from 1534 to 1582, took Kyoto, and he defeated the armies of the Buddhist monasteries. At the same time, the Portuguese were exploring trade opportunities in Japan. By 1545, they had established trade at Kyushu. Christian missions began in 1549. Some Kyushu daimyo adopted Christianity to take part in European trade. Perhaps 500,000 had converted by 1615. Nobunaga allied with the Portuguese to weaken Buddhist power. He drove the last Ashikaga shogun from Kyoto in 1573. He destroyed the Tendai monastery in Ryakuyi and forced others to submit to his power. Nobunaga then turned against other feudal lords. He was murdered in 1582 by one of his own men. Toyotomi Hideyoshi, another of Nobunaga's generals, took over. Hideyoshi was proof that changes had taken place in the Ashikaga shogunate, as he was from a peasant family. He continued to fight with the other lords, with the assistance of Tokugawa Iyasu. Hideyoshi invaded Kyushu in 1586, and by 1590 had unified Japan more completely than ever before. Aiming at the conquest of China, Hideyoshi sent an expedition to Korea in 1592. The Ming rescued the Koreans and forced the Japanese into negotiations, which lasted from 1593 to 1596. Hideyoshi refused the terms and began the campaign in 1597. He died in 1598 and his army returned to Japan with skilled artists. Foreigners complicated Japanese affairs with their own rivalries. Adoption of Christianity meant siding with one country over another. Hideyoshi thus prescribed Christianity in 1597. Although Hideyoshi refused the title of shogun, he claimed Fujiwara descent. He built a castle at Osaka and built a palace at Moyuyama, which is south of Kyoto. To maintain his power, he took his rival's wives and sons hostage. He also moved some of the daimyo around, furthering their evolution into functionaries. One of these daimyo was Tokugawa Iyasu, who was moved to the village of Edo. Hideyoshi spent lavishly and was a patron of the arts. His rule was based on direct control and fear. Tokugawa Iyasu was later protector of Hideyoshi's infant son. Iyasu was in fact wealthier than Hideyoshi, and some daimyo expected him to succeed Hideyoshi. Other daimyo resisted Iyasu and were defeated at the Battle of Sekigahara in 1600. 
their lands were distributed to those loyal to Iyasu. Iyasu founded the Tokugawa Shogunate, which lasted until 1868. Its government was the first national Japanese government. Hideyoshi's son was at first ignored, but the castle at Osaka was besieged by Iyasu in 1614. To avoid a similar fate for his successor after his death, Iyasu made his son, Hiditada, the titular ruler in 1605, though keeping real power until his death in 1616. Iyasu's castle at Edo survives and became the Tokugawa seat. Like his father, Hiditada retired in 1623 when his son took over. In spite of their power, the Tokugawa shogunate did not create a strongly centralized government. This left local rulers in control at that level. The peace they gained led to economic growth.